What's up, guys? What if I told you there was an open source and free solution that did XDR and SIM? And wait for it. There's more configuration assessments, malware detection, file integrity monitoring, threat hunting, log data analysis, vulnerability detection, incident response, regulatory compliance, IT hygiene, container security, cloud security, and more. You'd call me insane, but they also offer software as a service. So they offer this as a cloud hosted for you. You can host it yourself. They give you a Docker container for it. You can run it on Kubernetes. You can run it on multiple different machines. You can cluster it. You can do whatever you want to it and it's extensible. You can add on to it. People have community versions where there's more. It's pretty freaking sweet. I've been running it in my setup for a while, and today I'm going to show you how you can do it too. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to scroll up, we're going to click install Waza. Waza is an indexer, a server, and a dashboard. There are three components. You can put them all on one machine, or you can spread them out. You can have three different machines all running it. The indexer handles all the analysis, the server handles all the data aggregation, all the logs, and the dashboard is just the web server that displays it for you so you can interact with it. We're gonna click Quick Start. It shows you the hardware requirements. So if you have just a small deployment, you can do four vCPUs, just four virtual cores, eight gigs of RAM and 50 gigs of storage. This is what I'm gonna be sticking to just because this is a test deployment. Um, I already have my full deployment somewhere else. And then you can run it on basically whatever Linux platform you want, but these are the ones that they recommend. I'm going to be doing 2204. I'm going to do the server version, so the headless, because I don't need a desktop for this. And then it's just one little curl statement that executes some install script. Um, and it basically does it all for you. It's magical. So I'm going to pop on over to Proxmox. I already have a VM created here. Uh, if you guys don't know about Proxmox, let me know, and I will make a video about installing Proxmox, what it is, what it does. It's basically a VMware vSphere um, replacement. It's free and open source. allows you to create VMs, containers, um, ZFX pools. It does NAS and like... SMB shares, whatever you want it to do, it'll do it for you. And it's amazing. You can do clusters. It's crazy. So created the VM, plugged in the ISO file. I'm going to start this and then I'm going to start installing Ubuntu 22.04. If you guys already have your VM installed and you just want to follow through with the actual WASA install, or if you're just installing their virtual machine or their Docker container, you guys can skip past this. I'll put timestamps down in the description. All right, so now that I have SSH enabled and I can SSH in through my command prompt, I can now run this command. Give it the pseudo password. And now it's going to start installing Waza for me. So the installation is finished. It gives us our admin password and our username, and we should be able to go to that IP address. All right, so this is the dashboard uh, before you add any agents. The first thing you're going to want to do is add some agents. So add agent, Windows, put in your server address. It didn't used to have this remember server address. This is clutch because now you don't have to enter that in every time you deploy an agent. 
my computer is big and blue, so this is what we call it. Put into a default group, and then let's copy this command. Do we have to enter this in a PowerShell? Windows PowerShell, run as admin. And then we'll copy the start command. And then we will start the service. And then when we close this, we should have a new agent. All right, so it takes a little bit of time for the agent to realize that it needs to connect to the server. Once it does, it gives you some information about the agent, what kind of OS it's running, um, the IP address, the name, what cluster it's connected to, and then it starts running all of the vulnerability scanning, the compliance scanning, and the configuration assessment scanning in the background. And this takes a while. So I'm not gonna be able to show everything. Maybe we'll do a follow-up video to show um, what was found on my network, but let's install a Linux agent just to show you guys how that's done. And then uh, we'll end the video. So go to agents, deploy new agent, Linux, uh, Debian AMD64, this one's gonna be for my web server. Default group, copy the command. Yeah, so I'm just gonna paste the command, give it pseudo privs, and then start the agent. All right, so same thing as the Windows agent on the Linux agent, you can click on it. It shows you a little bit about it, IP address, the operating system. So this is Debian 12. And then it's going to be running the compliance and the vulnerabilities in the background. If we click on vulnerability detection, it already ran a couple of them. So it looks like we have four criticals. We can click on them and see what they are. And we can see what packages. So these packages are out of date and they have vulnerabilities in them. I need to go through and uh, run some updates apparently. You can click on the CVEs and you can um, copy, paste them, Google them, do whatever you want to do. Um, you can take that out. You can only look at this one. There's um, an inventory, so it shows you all the different packages that are on here. Um, You can take off the critical and it'll show all packages. And then you can look at events. So let's do time last 24 hours. Uh, there's no events yet because the time range is the last like five minutes. <clears throat> you can look at different file integrities, different events, dashboards configuration so we can see uh, just how poorly I configured this Minecraft server. So I definitely recommend running this on um, your home lab or your computers at home. Go through the configuration assessments to see if you want to change anything. Um, you can adhere to a different compliance or regulatory uh, measurement. You can update packages when they're vulnerable. You can look at malware. Let's take a look at what the malware detection says. Uh, no alerts. Yeah, there's a ton of cool stuff on here. Let me know in the comments what you guys want me to go through uh, more in depth and I'll spend some time uh, looking into it and making sure I understand how it works and all the bits and bobs and I'll, I'll get you guys the rundown. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did like it, hit like, get subscribed. Um, and I'd love it if you guys would give me some feedback. Let me know what I should do. And I will see y'all later.